I think one of the most impressive elements of Black Mirror is its continued ability to surprise me when it comes to concepts. I never would have imagined that Black Mirror would make an episode focused on military technology, but at the same time the military are one frontier of technological experimentation and application in the modern world. Nuclear weapons, the use of drones and robots replacing human soldiers, all very typical examples that spring to mind. Yet this episode's focus is more on the question of whether we can be relied on to use this technology, taking into account all of the flaws humanity possesses. Despite the futuristic nature of the story, the script was influenced by SLA Marshall's book of the same title. I've not actually read the book, but according to Arquette, the title relates to the lack of soldiers who actually fired their weapons in World War II. This ties into the notion that most human beings don't actually want to kill each other and that the military conditions young people into doing so. Human beings, however, have continuously found new ways to dehumanise and murder those that are deemed inferior or undeserving of a rich and positive life experience. Experience. This book is not the only reference to real life conflict either. The perceived enemy are called roaches, a shortened version of the word cockroaches that senior politician Leon Mujizera used to describe a minority population within the country of Rwanda before over 70% of them were killed. The ability to perceive a group of people as subhuman is a recurring notion throughout the episode and has been the cause of mass genocide not just in Rwanda but also across Europe in the Second World War, as well as the Ottoman Empire in the first. Here in the episode, however, a computer system known as MASS has been devised for the purpose of conditioning soldiers into believing that these so-called roaches are subhuman. However, the difference is that these soldiers cannot be swayed because the technology that's built inside their heads prevents them from thinking any other way, for freedom of thought destroys the narrative that the military believes to be true. It's interesting that we see people who aren't chipped who also believe the lies about people classified as roaches. This demonstrates not only the influence that fear can have on people, but because these individuals have been branded as roaches, as they have been driven out of their homes and are fleeing into the wilderness and therefore have to steal just to survive. When the soldiers go into Heidegger's house, one of the rooms contains a painting by William Holt titled, A Converted British Family Sheltering a Christian Missionary from the Persecution of the Druids. Yep, it's a mouthful, but the complete image looks like this. The shot we see in the episode closes in on the Christian missionary lying on the floor, clearly trying to hide from those that would seek to kill him. The use of this image hints at who might be hidden within this chap's house, but also makes makes the audience question who the real bad guys are, those that seek to protect innocent human life or the Puritan nature of the military industrial complex. Even more interesting is that Heidecker is a devout Christian himself, he has a cross hanging up on his wall just like the protective family depicted in the painting do. As Stripe walks through the house he passes a bird of prey perched in a room, symbolising that his vision isn't as sharp as it could be, their vision being four times sharper than that of a human's. This occurrence happens after he gets sonic screwdrivered by one of the roaches. Now able to see beyond the narrow mindset the military wants him to perceive and will start to see without the military lens. Heidecker is then blindfolded so he can no longer see the way Stripe can, unbeknownst to himself or the others. As the story unfolds, who exactly the enemy is begins to be put into question as Stripe starts to break through the military lens. He sees humans that Raymond perceives to be roaches, who she subsequently would kill. We are warned about this scenario occurring when the mother at the farm says, stop them coming. Did she mean the roaches or the military? How strange it is also that there's not a single mention of any government or company to name of that would act as authority except for Arquette and the computer system named Mass. Arquette being the computer's mouthpiece when explaining to Stripe at any point what exactly has gone wrong with his army implant. Unlike in a previous episode titled Entire History of You where the chip is very much visible and removable. This episode does share resemblances to that particular episode, you can see it when the group see through the drone's camera. They all have that hypnotic gaze with discoloured pupils just like whenever the characters in entire history wanted to rewatch a memory of theirs. We also find this familiar tech later on when Stripe has to relive his killing of two innocent people that he initially perceived to be zombie looking roaches. Both episodes have their two protagonists agonisingly watch through events they would later come to regret. Mass then puts a filter over the eyes of the soldiers in order to convince them of the narrative. The narrative being that science has found a portion of human beings are prone to becoming more sexually deviant, have brain diseases and purely from a statistical perspective are genetically inferior. Instead of finding a cure for these issues, the mystery authority of the episode, either from an unnamed institution or Mass itself, decides that just killing them would be the best option. So they claim that the roaches are carrying an infection, shown through the filters that Mass provides during their conflicts 
with them. Arquette has become so convinced by the story inside his own ideological bubble that he talks of ideal human beings being the inheritors of the earth, as if it was providence that this extermination of supposedly inferior human beings happened. When Arquette visits Stripe after his encounter with Ramian in the forest, he immediately blames the machine for having an error, as opposed to the very human error of believing that some humans are inferior to others. He thinks so little of these people that they be referred to as it instead of he or she. Stripe uses the phrase stick him when describing the stabbing of the roach, but changes the phrase to sticking it instead moments later. The same can be said of Medina when Stripe fails to do the press-ups that are required of him. She repeats the phrase strong and pure, once again using these word games to alienate soldiers into thinking that their reasoning for conflict is justified. The problem with the argument is that it's not clearly stated where you draw the line on the human superiority scale. Does somebody with disabilities or mental health disorders count as inferior compared to those that don't, thus should be killed too? It certainly seems that given we're in a dystopian future in this episode where the military are this powerful, perhaps Brooker's concerns lie not only in the potential for destruction technology could have if put into the hands of the military, but the power and size of the military also. It's like he's predicting what the military will look like in the future given the ludicrous amounts of taxpayer money that gets poured into the American military at the moment. If this money is to be used for the power of a nation's military, perhaps the episode warns that with great power comes great responsibility. In this tale, however, there is none at all. Mass is also responsible for making the soldiers feel good about killing the roaches. Telling them to fear being infected by roaches is one thing, but rewarding them for committing acts of murder is really going to blind them into believing anything. Due to an inbuilt reward system that's active on their unconscious brain activity, Mass is able to manipulate and create dreams that meet the individual's sexual desires. These dreams become more fantastical and arousing the more roaches one kills. Stripe and Raymond discuss the frequency of their dreams during time target practice, and establishes that there is competition amongst the soldiers for pleasing the machine and it rewarding them in return. In a sense it's like a video game too, Call of Duty rewards players for gaining continuous kills without dying, giving players reason to keep killing each other within the game. You can see this competition and lust for succession play out in the second mission, where Stripe begins to question his reality, smelling the grass and getting no sensation whatsoever. He is desensitised by the machine, giving him a much more competitive experience than a realistic one. Raymond moves around the building, ignoring her comrades so she can kill and be rewarded for it. There's a fantastic shot of her shooting the wall in slow motion with a sadistic smile on her face, knowing she'll be rewarded for her killing spree. It's here in the episode where a first-time viewer would realise that the roaches are just people, but the filter makes them look and sound like zombies of some kind. Zombies are also something commonly represented within video games and popular entertainment as dangerous individuals that people will mercilessly kill without hesitation. There's also other references to the game-like nature of the military experience in this dystopia. We see several shots resembling those you would see in a first-person shooter with a gun in the right-hand corner of the screen. Also later on, when Stripe kills a roach with his knife, it's shown from his perspective. We also see this first-person perspective used in the dream segments and when the team use the drone. Because the soldier's vision is obscured by so many layers and filters, the line between fantasy and reality are intentionally blurred to make the soldiers operate as intended. This use of perspective is used to intriguing effect when Stripe is forced to re-watch his own kill of an innocent person. You'll notice that this time, however, images from the roach's perspective are laid within it too, increasing the emotional response Stripe has to his kills, torturing him with empathy. Due to the unethical application of the mass system into the minds of young soldiers, it's safe to be sceptical of anything this technology presents to us as a positive. Although the idea of the translation device seems extremely useful, can you safely rely on a machine with resentment for inferior humans built into its code to provide you with accurate translations of what they're saying? The same can be said for these sexual dreams they all have too. Take, for example, when Stripe dreams after seeing Arquette for the first time in the story. The jittery movement of the image we see towards the end of the dream replicates the ferocious nature of how cockroaches breed. It is difficult to interpret exactly what is happening here, but there is clearly some internal technological conflict between the reward system and Stripe being flashed with the roach device beforehand. Is it the device that's causing the error within the dream of this vision? Or is the vision slowly becoming a nightmare because of mass fighting back against Stripe's rejection of the the artificial reality produced inside his mind? My interpretation of the ending is that it takes place long after the events of the episode. Presumably, he continued working for the military and submitted to continuing service with his mind wiped just to end the torture. After his time in service, however, the house looks in complete disrepair and is unlikely that the girl from his dreams would stick around in such a place. Due to seeing the house with the military lens still active, shown through his changed iris colour, he will continue to live in a fantasy world with a girl that resides inside 
inside his mind. Perhaps this final scene signifies that these technological advancements are better placed in serving society than neglecting it. Thanks for watching. Got a bit more of a philosophical question this time around. Is violence ever justified? Comment below where we will continue this discussion.